Welcome everybody, I am Jesse Bartman and this is Bartman's Bit. Today, we're going to be talking about some really exciting news for all you Kandao KuCam 8K owners and potential buyers. Kandao has just released new firmware that unlocks Super HDR. Why is this such an important update? Well, Super HDR is going to take the already fantastic image technology that Kandao uses, DNG8, and basically triples the goodness. When selected, the camera will automatically take three sets of photos at varying EV levels to really nail that dynamic range. I'll show you guys an example after I take a photo. That'll be later in the video. Let's go ahead now, jump into the camera and get it updated. Okay, let's go ahead and turn it on and fire up the app. So normally what would happen during this time is as soon as you open the app, it would tell you that there was a firmware download. Now mine has already forced its way in. Um, I downloaded it right away. I knew what it was uh, before I started shooting this video. So normally it would show up on the screen here as um, new firmware available. Download it, it'll go through the whole process. And then at that point, once you connect to your camera here, that's when it'll say, hey, your firmware's out of date go ahead and update it. And there's some tutorials on here. I believe it's on here. Yep, firmware update right there. Very straightforward. All right, so since mine doesn't have any firmware update, let's go ahead and just connect to the camera. Swipe down, make sure the Wi-Fi is on. And I'm sure if you're familiar with the camera at all, you know that holding it down will give you the password. There you go, it's the same for all of them, so you don't really need it. All right, so you make sure it's on. Go into your settings. Connect to it. There you go. Once you're connected to it, we can open up the camera as usual. If you played around with your camera, you definitely know how to do that. All right, there we go. That's me. I'm wearing a nice old Tusker t-shirt. All right, so what do we got? And there's the option, Super HDR. Okay, one thing I wanted to mention real quick. Anytime you're doing firmware updates on a device like this that doesn't have a huge user base, it's probably best to avoid the update altogether if it's just minor things that you don't really need, especially when you have a known good working configuration. I did exactly what I wasn't supposed to do right there, which was update the firmware to this brand new Super HDR and everything, all the new features, right before going out to a job. Now what you should do is update your firmware if it's a major update, take some time to test it, and then go out and try it on the job. Just be cautious when you're doing those firmware updates. Now let's get back to the video. All right, so I have placed the camera in the middle of my room here so we can get a nice uh, nice test of the dynamic range. Over in the corner, we've got some dark spots and I also have the lights here up above and to the side. So it should provide a nice wide range of lighting options. So we'll go ahead and open it up and connect to the camera and then we're gonna take a DNG8 and HDR. We'll preview them on here just to see how they look and then I'll throw them up on the screen so you can tell for yourself which one looks better. All right, there's our preview. Here I am. So over in this corner here, you can see it's a little bit darker. Plus we have the lights here and up above. Let's go ahead and see how it goes. All right, so it's on DNG8. We're gonna go ahead and leave everything on auto go to regular not express and go ahead and take it there's one and two pretty straightforward I'm sure everyone that already has it is used to 
those two shutters, uh, shutter sounds. Now let's slide it over, Super HDR. Doesn't really give you much option on this one because it is doing the bracketing for you. We can do the white balance, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave it on auto and go for it. First set. Takes a long time in between there. You'd say it says, capturing, please make steady the camera. Three sets of photos will be taken and combined. And there's the third set. So it is important for this that you don't remember what you're doing with the DNG 8. Listen for those two shutter sounds and then go ahead and move the camera because it's got to take two more sets. And it looks like it downloads it right to the phone right away instead of keeping it on the camera. So that's interesting. It does not do that with the DNG8. Now let's go ahead and take a look. It's the camera album. Let's switch over to the app album. And there's the HDR. So if we want to go ahead and look at that one that we just took with the DNG8, we have to go to the camera. And it looks like this is the last one. So here's the DNG8. Uh, looks like it overexposed it a little bit here. It's a little too bright. It does a pretty good job in the corners here. Now let's see how it compares. On the phone, of course, we're gonna see how it compares to the Super HDR. There you go, now you have both of them. So here is the Super HDR. Okay, so it's a lot flatter of a tone here. That does much better. <laughs> you can see I was moving around quite a bit. Yeah, it handles the lights a lot better while maintaining that brightness that we saw in the DNG8 over in the corners here. So I'm gonna go ahead and experiment with a couple different scenarios for lighting and we'll go ahead and throw them up on the screen now so you can judge for yourself which one you like better. Clearly, I, I'm pretty sure everyone's gonna stick with the Super HDR from this point on. Okay, so I've pulled up both the photos here. On the left, we have the DMG, and on the right, we have the Super HDR. And already you can see just how it handled the, the bright lights here, the major difference. Up on the top of the DNG, it is washed out. It didn't handle them very well at all. On the right with the HDR, you can see it took care of them to the point where you can still see the ceiling around those lights, especially the little anchor points I have up in the corner there for my VR headset. On the DNG, just it's not quite there. Also, it looks a lot better in the closet area here where there was less light and the right side here. Uh, sorry, on the left, the GNG file just couldn't quite capture the dark area. It also looks like the colors are a little bit better represented. They're more flat, almost like a log. The DNG is quite uh, saturated. So overall, I will definitely stick with the Super HDR for any work that I do using the Kucam 8K. It is really great that Kandao keeps feeding us these firmware updates, and this one helps bolster that point. The addition of the Super HDR to this already fantastic camera brings it dangerously close to professional 360 cameras that cost thousands of dollars. Okay, that's gonna do it for today. If you like this video, don't forget to click on the like button below. And if you didn't like it, then feel free to tell me how I can make these videos better in the comments below. As always, don't forget to subscribe.